Innocence starts with the image of Rusty Savage sitting on a bed in which the dead body of his wife Barbara lies. The novel unpacks the questions, how did she die, who killed her, and why? I was lucky enough, uh, following law school, to get a job here in the federal courthouse in Chicago, where I worked as an assistant United States attorney every day. I was writing during those days on the morning commuter train, the novel that ultimately became Presumed Innocent, and it promptly changed my life. In literature as in music, there are a lot of one-hit wonders, and so the pressure on the second book in particular was enormous. The short answer is I wasn't ready to write that sequel until about five years ago. I had a post-it note, and the note said, a man is sitting on a bed in which the dead body of a woman lies. And all of a sudden, I looked at that post-it note, and I realized, Rusty Savage is that man sitting on the bed. And of course, the next thing I had to decide is, well, who's the dead woman? When his wife of 35 years, Barbara, turns out to be that woman, an investigation ensues. Pursuit of those questions ultimately leads Rusty into a intense courtroom confrontation with his nemesis, Tommy Malto. Sandy Stern, Rusty's lawyer, is involved again, and the most eager spectator is Rusty's son, Nat. From an author's perspective, I think Innocent is a book thematically that's about the change that occurs between the generations and about the kinds of changes that occur in the law, in one's perspectives of the law, <clears throat> within one's family. All of that is contained within what I think readers will find to be uh, a pretty darn suspenseful and I hope clever uh, courtroom mystery.